Hello, I'm Brian Lujillo, Professor of Theology and Ethics at Azusa Pacific Seminary. These are some theological reflections around our times of COVID-19. I shared some of these thoughts in a symposium on April 7th. Today I want to look at a historical response to the plague. There's an idea that developed after the Black Plague in Europe in the 14th century, after the church witnessed mass flight, mass graves, and witnessed how people were abandoned while sick and dying. It, was the, it were these events, and more, that made the church realize that people needed guidance on how to die, especially when they might die without access to a priest or deacon, that is, the last rites. In response to these horrors of the plague, a literature developed called The Art of Dying, the Ars Morendi. This early self-help literature usually highlighted five temptations experienced when dying, and likewise encouraged five virtues that overcame these temptations. Today I'm finding that the temptations it lists to lose faith, despair, impatience, pride, avarice, that these temptations are the same we are faced with in these times. Especially the temptation of impatience, which we'll see has love that is patient as the virtue that overcomes impatience. In this woodblock from a late 15th century English uh, Art of Dying pamphlet, you have the dying man kicking the physician away. Don't bother me. His wife next to the physician in the scroll saying, he, see how much he suffers. She's making an excuse for his impatience. And you see how he's also overturned a table with his food. He wants relief from his suffering now. He's impatient. We're in impatient times. We desperately want healing now. But impatience is a temptation. And we need to lean into the virtue of love that is patience, or that is patient. The five virtues, each virtue corresponds with one of the temptations. And here you have faith, hope, love, humility, and letting go. In this image, you have the man at peace. He is in a prayerful posture, surrounded by the saints who were patient in their suffering and were martyrs, witnesses to God. Here you have in the top right, you have Jesus next to the Father, and then you have three saints to the left of them. You have Santa Barbara holding uh, this tower, you have St. Lawrence holding uh, his grail. You have uh, St. Catherine holding a wheel and sword. And then you have St. Stephen holding some stones. He's surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, this great cloud of martyrs. And he's loving God. I think this is a virtue we need to lean into against the temptation of impatience. This literature, in general, looks death square in the face and understands our mortality. Currently, we are learning how to come to terms with our mortality when technology and governments aren't able to fully protect us or save us. This was the case then as now. But then the church began to understand that it was the responsibility of the church to teach us how to die well, not magistrates and not physicians. In his book, The Art, Christian Art of Dying and Learning from Jesus, Alan Verhey talks about the way in which we have put the responsibility of dying in some ways in the hands of of the medical profession. And he shows by reviewing the medieval literature of the art of dying how 
the church needs to recapture its vocation, its responsibility for teaching us how to die well. In that book, he mentions briefly about how when someone begins to feel the alienation of community, like those in the plague would, and shunned, and quarantined, what they experience is the premature triumph of death. Because death is not just biological. Death is the separation of a host of relationships. And so as we socially, well, as we socially distance ourselves from others, self-isolate and self-quarantine, what we experience is, is our mortality, the, the separation of relationships. If you're interested in recapturing some of these traditions or some of the wisdom in the Ars Morendi literature, I highly commend this book to you, especially in these times. As we realize our mortality and our great dependence on God, let this be a time where we patiently, patiently and lovingly wait upon the Lord. Peace be with you.